Hi, my name is Antonin from Team Solo Mid, and this is my basic champion guide to Lee Sin. So for Solo Kill, Lee Sin is really, really strong at ganking and snowballing the game. So you want to pick this champion if you want to snowball the game from like the beginning. You want to win the game early with the comp you have, or you're just a really strong mechanical player because Lee Sin is not easy to play. And because I only give him eight in ganking because like it's actually quite a lot because you really rely on hitting your skill shots. You have to land your Q and you have to be able to wall jump behind them and use your ultimate on them. But the thing is, if you learn these basics, Lee Sin's early game ganks, if you land the Q, you probably, that's probably one of the strongest early game junglers in terms of damage. And jungle clearing, he's, I only give him six out of 10 because his jungle clear is decent. But the thing is like, he's decent because he doesn't lose health in the jungle because you have your W, which gives, Shield and it also gives you um, it also gives you life steal, so you don't really take damage in the jungle. But what is bad about it is that he doesn't clear the jungle that optimal. He doesn't clear it fast as stuff like Rexa and Nidalee. So I only give him six out of ten for that. And for Solo Q, I give him an all seven because I feel like he's really really strong early game. He can have a lot of impact. But the later the game goes, his in falls off as a champion because he scales really really bad, and you have to rely on your team to carry you later on in the game. So I would pick Lee Sin in the scenarios where I trust my team enough to carry me through the later stages of the game or I just simply think that okay I'm so good on Lee Sin that I can carry the game from the early game and when it hits 20 minutes mark we already we probably already won, won the game. So on the same when you're ganking at level 3 you want to gank where you come in from behind you can either wall jump behind them or you can just walk behind them it depends where in the lane they are but if you can walk behind them then you start off with like just going there pressing E and basic attack them and slowing them down and then when you're sure you can hit the Q then you press Q on them because you want to make sure you land the Q because if you throw the Q from a max range distance then they can either dash it, they can jump it, they can flash it, whatever they want to do but if you're close to them they don't have the same react timer and at level 6 you want to also come from behind then you want to wall jump behind them and then you want to ultimate them slash kick them into the team and therefore he should die instantly. So Lee Sin is a really good counter jungle because he's always healthy in his own jungle and because you get an early side stun you can always take control of his jungle and then if you can, like let's say you're against the Rengar, Rengar will always be low in the jungle and Lee Sin will always be full health so if you can see him on a ward you can always go kill him. Also for early game level 3, some jungles will get really low and therefore you can take advantage of you having all the health and he has nothing. So team fighting with Lee Sin, you always want to be sort of a peeler as Lee Sin because you have the shield and you have your ultimate to kick people away. But if you see an opportunity, like if you're playing a really heavy engage comp, then as Lee Sin you can also do get the pick. So you can queue onto a person and then you can wall jump behind another guy and then you can all the carry into the team. And that's a really, really huge thing to do. If you can land that in a team fight, get one of the carries into your team, you would probably win every single team fight. So in Lee Sin, well, all jungles in general, you want to start on the opposite side of your bot lane because you want to give bot lane the either Grump or Golem. So if you're blue side, you want to start on top side, so you start on Grump. You get a leash from your top lane, and after Grump, you do blue buff, and then you run straight to red buff. When you've killed all three camps, you're a little free, and then you should look to gank either bot lane or mid lane. And if none of those are gankable, you can always just take the skull, and then you can go back to the jungle and farm up. So a tip on Lee Sin is like normally as a jungler when you bag the first time you always buy a sweeper but on Lee Sin I feel like the string ward is really really efficient because it gives you another escape path and you always have your trinket up so you can always wall jump. So what I do is I first sell my trinket ward when I get my side stone so I make sure I always have walls I can jump to to escape if I get caught uh, oh I want to engage the team fight. So on Lee Sin you do 80 coins and 80 reds because he scales really well with 80 and you do armor yellows because you need armor in the jungle to proficiently like clean the camps and also when you hit level 3 you want to either attack the other jungle you want to gang and therefore you need some resistances and that's like CDR, blues or magic assist. It depends if they have magic damage on their comp. If they have magic damage in their team then always do magic assist but they, if they have no magic damage threats if they are full 80 comp then doing CDR blues is really efficient on Lee Sin. On Lee Sin I do 21-9-3 masteries because I, as a Lee Sin you want to be really offensive in the early game and you want to be as aggressive as possible so you want to have as much damage and you want to have the fastest clean and later on in the game it doesn't matter how tanky you are because you do all this stuff in the early game. So on Lee Sin you start with Q because you want to do maximum damage, second you take W because W gives you more sustain in the jungle and third you take E. After that you max Q and then you can max E but for me I max W second because I feel like the shield is really really big and also you get more life steal when you proc your second W. But some people really like to carry the game from only early game, therefore they take points in E because then you do more damage overall. 
So for Lysenia, you always want to do the Warrior Enchantment Jungle item. Um, I personally like Blue Smite because Blue Smite might make sure she's on the enemy, but also you can do Red Smite if you really want to do early skirmishers, and you can do Pearl Smite if you really want to farm. And after that, you get your Side Stone because Side Stone is really, really good on Lee Sin because you can wall jump and you can get a lot of vision. And after that, if you're really far ahead, I would personally, if you're against AP threats and you are ahead, then I would do Hexstring because Hexstring gives you a lot of AD and also magic resist, and the shield is really, really nice. When it procs, and but if you're just even and you feel like you just want to be the tank that your team needs, then you can do. It really depends if you're there's mainly magic resist or AD damage. So if you're against a lot of AP, then you should do log it first, and if you're against a lot of AD, you should do randoms first, and after that, you do the opposite. So if you're against a lot of AD, you take the randoms first, then you do the log, and if you're against a lot of AP, you take the log first, and then you do randoms, and after that. If you're against mainly AD, you should probably get a farm mail because farm mail is really good against AD. But if they have a really huge magic resist heavy composition, you should probably get a banshee to make sure you have enough sustain. And after that, personally, I um, like if you that by then you already have six items. So what I normally do is that I would probably sell my blue smite and then I would get a blood first or something like that to just optimize my build. Thanks for watching this guide. Make sure to watch the rest of my guides on lolclass.com. Of her spearing and her healing. So since Nilly has such a fast jungle clearing, then she also is really good at counter jungling. And normally the first time you can counter jungle is around level three because you'll most likely be full health, whereas the other jungle would probably be four to six.